When I make flashlight videos, every once in a while I'll get comments about where are the headlamps? Well, here you go. Here's five headlamps from four different companies. The question we're gonna ask is, are any of them worth our time? Simply put, yeah, there's a couple here that are quite good and I definitely wanna talk about them. Different price ranges, different overall ideas behind them. Let's go ahead and just take a look because we're gonna fly through this real fast. Nothing like kicking things off with a good head-to-head -head comparison. We have the H150 from Skill Hunt and the Ace Beam H16. So both of these flashlights run on either a AA, rechargeable AA, or a 14500, which will give it a higher output setting. So both these flashlights, they have a lot of versatility. They're both IPX8 waterproof, and uh, they both have charging cables. Now, the first thing you're going to notice is one of these is type C and the other one is a proprietary charging system that kind of, uh, it does work, but it re means that the battery inside is going to depend on this specific cable in order to charge with this. You can always take the battery out and you can bay charge it, but we can already tell right off the bat that the H16 has better versatility simply because you can take the battery out and charge the battery itself and that is just a little bit more efficient and there's less to go wrong there's less components on the outside and so i really do think the h16 takes that category also it takes the category of having a much simpler much more efficient headband this silicon is a lot softer and a lot more flexible whereas the hard plastic that is used from the skill hunt it's not nearly as comfortable on the head there's another thing right there. And then the outputs. You can get this one in cool white, which I believe reaches 650 lumens, or you can get a neutral white high CRI at around 450. Now this is suffering a little bit because it came out first. The H16 has a white version, like a, a cool white version, goes 1,000 lumens, and its high CRI is 550. So yeah, once again, H16 is taking this. Now, pocket clip, it is a wash. Both can be reversible. They both go in a, a different amount. And uh, yeah, there you go. Now, buttons, this is interesting. This one's on the side. This one's on the top. Now, this the reason you would do this in large part is because you don't want to accidentally turn the light. And this is one of the areas that will likely do that. But it's easier to find. And the one of the tricks that the H16 has is that if you click once, nothing happens on this light. You actually have to double click to turn the light on single click to turn it off and hold press gives you the lowest mode or moonlight and then you can turn it off once again and they are separate from each other so the double press always turns it on and so on and so forth so that's how it gets around the accidental presses and i've carried this in my pocket and i've never had an issue which is quite awesome um, this one also haven't had an issue because of the location of the button you can just kind of set it up in such a way that you don't have to worry about it and uh, I kind of use it set up in the corner of my pocket so that there's really no way for me to accidentally press it. And it, it does turn on with a single press. So in theory, you could bump yourself and turn on the light and drain it. That's not gonna be as big of an issue with the H16. So close to a wash, I'd call on this one. And the uh, you kind of make up for it a little bit by having the programmable capability on the skill hunt. So each of the modes, the high, the turbo, and the low all have the ability to swap between two different modes so you have a lot of control over the exact output you want. So kind of a little bit of tit for tat on this one. But where things really diverge and where this is where the H16 absolutely wipes the floor with not only Skill Hunt but pretty much every other company out there is that this is currently sitting around that $22 price point whereas this is like close to 50. I don't have to say anything else. Um, that is why as much as I like this company and they do make some of my favorite flashlights, like the, I think I want to say something 200, I forget the, the 18650 um, inline, but they make some great flashlights, but this is not, this is not a favorable comparison for them. So the H16, a great value. If you can get it on sale, they are quite good and they are going to serve you very, very well. Both the cool white and the neutral white are both very, very good. They're going to give you a lot of different usefulness to it. And I think the UI is basically a perfect one. Like they, they nailed it. It doesn't require any lockout. The headband works really well. It's very, very light. It uses a standard off the shelf AA. Yeah, 
we're good. Let's move on to some of the other more conventional head headlamps. Now I picked this up actually only a few days ago, the HA11, and the idea was I wanted to have a couple of options that were under $20 that had a bunch of different uh, types of flashlights. So I noticed I didn't have a single headlamp of any type that came in under 20 consistently. And this one actually does, and it actually has just the right functionality and UI, everything pretty much I wanted. So first of all, this runs off a single AA battery, which it does come with. Turning it on, is very, very simple. You actually have to hold press, which I like. So that means that when it's in its off position, it's very hard to accidentally turn on the light. That's another great thing, kind of similar to the H16. If I hold press this button right here, it brings it in on red. So if I don't want to mess up my night vision, I can do that. And then I can hold press that button again to turn off the light. Now, if I hold press this other button, it will come in on white. I can press it one time to go from low to high. It's just two modes, very, very simple. And then hold press to turn off. And also if I'm on, I can hold press this one or just press it once and I will get my red light. Sorry, I'm mixing the UIs in my head. But either way, for $20, it's not completely waterproof. So that's something of note, but it does a very good job. And it comes with a very simple and very effective headband. It is very, very, very light. This headband can be removed which I do really also like, and it comes with this additional clip. Now this clip, because it's curved, you can leave it on and it will not cause any hot spots or anything like that. But the fact that you could actually attach it to a belt or like a shirt or anything else and actually use it hands-free that doesn't involve putting it on your head, that actually gives this a bit of an advantage over a lot of other flashlights. So I really like this one. I think they did a very, very good job. And at 20 bucks, yeah, it's a solid one. If you want a conventional headlamp for under $20, this would definitely be one of those I could recommend. So the next flashlight is the WPH30R. Yeah, I mean, they don't have names, so yeah, you have to deal with the numbering system. So there are five modes in this flashlight. We're actually gonna start with the modes. There is a high flood, then the spot, then the combined total of the two, which gives you a thousand lumens, we have a red light, and then we have a low mode for that floody beam. Now, run times for this can be found on the back of the box, so don't throw that away so you can see what it is. See it right here. So we have uh, seven hours at 400 lumens, which is actually kind of amazing. Five hours at 600. Combined, we have three hours, and then flood on low, we have 23 hours. This is actually very, very, very good run times in pretty much all categories. So nicely done. It's also important to note that this comes with an included rechargeable 18650, and this has a built-in Type-C port. It will also use standard off-the-shelf CR123s in a pair of two. So that's nice battery versatility. So all that's great. One thing I wanna note, and this was not immediately apparent to me, press and hold gives you max output, double press for red. So, why that order matters. If you're just cycling through it to try to find it, you have no instructions, you're probably gonna do this. It'll come in on spot, uh, flood, spot, then combined, and then red, and then white, and then off, right? So you don't have to really think about it. You know, you can find the one you want. It's not gonna be the most convenient to go straight into, say, red, but you can figure it out without any instruction. The cool part, though, is that you can access both the highest and the lowest mode, in this case red, directly from the side switch. And it, it is reversed from what most flashlights do. So hole pressing will actually give you the thousand lumen max where you have both flood and spot. And if we turn it off, which when it sits for a certain time, will turn off automatically with one press. Um, if we double press, we get our red light. Now another press from there will take you to the low white and then it will go to the end of that set up and that will turn off the light. I actually think that they did a good job in this case because it's simple enough, I don't have to explain anything. And it, for me, somebody who wants to not blow out my vision, I have access to red first and then the low before it turns off. I also have access to the top of the ramp right away. This checks every box for me, waterproof, battery versatility, good, uh, quality control, we'll get to that in a second. 
It actually comes with, and this is actually something I've seen with a couple of their flashlights. I really, really like this. Even the cable is of note here. So this actually has either a type A or type C to type C combo. So you don't have to have a converter. This will work a couple of different ways. And I kind of like that. Like most of the time these cables are throwaway, but this one is actually decent. So that's cool. It is aluminum body here with just a plastic on the front, which is actually a good thing because this is what's gonna take most of the damage anyway. We have the battery compartment, which is screwed in over here. And then over on this side with the button, if we unscrew it, you'll notice that we have a type C port. So the battery that it comes with and the flashlight itself has a type C port. So if you use a standard 18650 that you normally would have to be bay charged, you can then charge that battery. So I actually think this is one of the better headlamps that I've seen, genuinely. It's very, very good. It has the red, it has the waterproof writing I'm looking for, it has the battery versatility. It's It's got a lot, it's got a lot going for it. And when you kind of like collapse everything together, it's small enough you can fit it in a pocket, right? That's not always true with every single headlamp out there, but this one, this one packs nicely in a pocket and it's it doesn't require a very complicated explanation if you're handing it to someone. And that that is actually has its own value. Now, I do say that this is a little bit on the premium side price-wise. If you can find a decent price, and I would say like around the $60 mark, it's, it's an absolute just home run. Um, at around 70, it's kind of pushing it. So keep an eye out for sales for this light. It's certainly worth a pickup in the right price range. But I don't wanna spend any more time on it because the next light might be the coolest flashlight that I've ever seen. When I saw this at SHOT Show, I thought it was so cool. I ended up coming back the second day just to play with it again. It is just one of the coolest headlamps in existence. Uh, there's just not many like it out there. Um, and this one is kind of in a league of its own, especially when it's coming out of coast, which you just don't expect something of this caliber to be doing, you know, coming out of coast of all people. Anyway, this, as you can see, has a voice control. So there is all the commands right there. We're gonna do that in just a minute, but I wanna go through it without the voice controls because I wanna show you that they also perfected the UI without any complicated, like, need to figure this out. So check this out. There is a dial that controls the output, and this will control the output whether it's on or off. So as long as I've spun it all, spun, spun it, spun it all the way to the left, it will be on its lowest mode. And if I press the button, it'll give me the halo for the left button, which will cycle between white, red, and off. Right side will go from uh, spot or flood to spot, both, and then off. And then center is green and blue and then off. I mean, it doesn't get much simpler than that. And if I spin it all the way to the other side, I get the high version of both. You get the idea, right? So I love, love the UI on this. This is actually perfect. I like, I don't use that word very often, but I feel like that's happened twice in a couple of days with Coast. Like this has a perfect user interface. I mean, so good, but then it gets better. You see this button on the bottom? Click that button, click a little button. And now we get to have a little fun. Coast on, coast off, coast low, coast minimum. And I'll drop it all the way down to low. Let me, let me actually turn it to its side so you can actually see what's going on here. All right, coast green, coast blue, coast red, coast high, It'll actually brighten it up. Coast low, coast arc, coast low. So you can control it as you get into it, which is awesome. Let's see, what else do we got here? Uh, coast maximum. And then it'll turn, off the, turn on the whole thing. This is the coolest light ever. I mean, this is so cool. I, I don't know what else to say. I mean, I love this thing. And then it combines the fact that it has a power bank on the back. This thing actually has little red lights that you can use for flashing. So if you are on a bike or something, you can see, people can see you. Uh, it also has a battery indicator, type C port built in. The battery itself also has a type C port, just like with the other one. So it's a type C port on the battery. It will use standard 18650s. It'll use two CR123s. Love that battery versatility. 
The only thing it doesn't have that the other one did is a waterproof rating of um, IP68. This is IP54, I believe, I believe. I believe it's IP54, um, which makes sense. With the way this is designed, it, it, it's gonna take splashes, it's gonna take rain, it's gonna be okay, but it's not something you're gonna wanna submerge. The other flat headlamp is gonna do a better job with that. If you think you're going to be um, on a boat or something like that, I definitely recommend the other one. There are some advantages here. I think where this really is gonna shine is when you're doing fix fixings around the house, you have your hands kind of tied up and then you can actually kind of adjust it without touching anything. Or let's say you're on a fishing trip, you're done with everything, you're cleaning the fish, you know, it's late at night and this has actually happened to me where you have to clean the fish before you bring it home to keep it from spoiling and you're in the dark and your hands are covered in scales and in schmutz and you're trying to to hold the light as well. So there's a lot of potential for this light and that's not even including the automotive side of things where you, every single part of this light you will use. If I'm gonna pick one little critique and I mean really tiny, is that instead of either red, I'm sorry, blue or green, please, for the love of Mike, give me a UV light. That would knock this thing so far out of the park, it's not even funny. If they ever make an update to this, please give me the blue in UV instead, or the green, in, I'm not sure which one is better, I really don't know, but one of those two, just give me a UV light. Oh my God, that would be phenomenal. Just phenomenal. I don't have anything bad to say about this light, really. like. That was like the smallest nitpick ever. We also have that same cable we talked about in that last one. This is a home run, man. I, I just, I'm really shocked. And this is why I, I, I have, they were, they were my, my big standout of SHOT Show in January because their lineup has gotten so much better. It really shows. And this is probably their, their class leading flashlight or headlamp. You get the same, same thing. So the briefest of sum ups, we have the RL35R, which is probably one of the coolest flashlights I have been able to play with in a long time. We have the WPH30R from, from Coast also, which has a very high quality, completely waterproof, and a lot of battery versatility and easy access to different modes. The H16, which is a very easy pocketable flashlight with a good UI. We have the HA11, which also has a very good UI and is less than $20, along with a removable um, head piece and a clip that you can use for various different things. All four of these are excellent. All different needs, genres, whatever you can imagine. I, it doesn't matter what you do. I, I'm hoping this gives you a wide enough range. There are some other styles out there of headlamps, certainly ones that can take more of a beating that are for spelunking and that kind of thing. But I don't have a context in which to test those. So they're not particularly relevant to me specifically. If there's a, some, is there, if there are some other flashlights that you think I should take a look at, let me know down in the comments and I will be reading. As always, thank you guys so much for your time and we'll talk again soon.